evolved from paper to iPads. According to Seth, the, that's the new thing we're supposed to do that, you know, just makes it all better, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, and there may be ponies. I've talked to a friend, and she, last I heard, she was bringing ponies to this event next weekend. So, yeah, so you can um, take pictures with them, and I don't know, and she dresses them up. They actually have Halloween costumes that she dresses them up in, so we may have ponies. So, um, it's really good to be here. Um, as uh, John said, that Pastor Dusty can be here because he's in quarantine, and so um, he calls me up and says, hey, come out here for a minute, and I'm like, this is like Tuesday, and I come out, and he's like, you're on deck this Sunday. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm supposed to have one in the, you know, in the back of my mind anyway at all times. That's kind of part of my, what his requirement is. And so I said, yep, I'm ready. <laughs> so, but it's, you know, it's great to be here. And, and I know I brag on our worship band all the time. And, man, I, I mean, they, if there's any team, any worship team that's going to bring the Holy Spirit into this place, it is them. There are times, and, and um, maybe you feel this, um, that there are times that, like, the air changes in here for me. Like, I can feel the heaviness, the just something of the Holy Spirit in this place. And I, I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And today especially, that was great. And I can say that because today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. So thank you for ushering us into this place already preparing our hearts to hear about the Holy Spirit today. You know, and when anytime I have to preach, I, I think, what am I going to teach? You know, i got to teach these people something about you, Lord. What do I teach? And the Holy Spirit relieved me that this week, and he said, your gift is not teaching. You know, I'm like, okay. But my gift is not teaching. Tamara, she's a teacher. Her gift is teaching, and she is amazing at it. But my gift is exhortation. I encourage, I like to pray with people, I like to talk with people, and just, you know, I do nails also on the side, and I have done that for 28 years, and I can't even tell you the number of times that God has used me through the Holy Spirit speaking through me to the people that I am doing their nails. I'm literally holding their hand in mine, so they're listening and they can't get away. So I can say about anything, and they're going to they're gonna at least hear me. So um, today I just want to encourage you in um, the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, I'm not going to try to teach it. I'm just going to encourage you on the things that I know to be true. And I love the Holy Spirit. I love what he does in my life. And the more that I study, the more I want to study. The more questions that I have. Um, the Holy Spirit is a huge, enormous subject. I mean, it's, it's just there's so many things about the Holy Spirit. Like, I was trying to compare it to, like, the United States. If the Holy Spirit was the United States, I am going to teach you about Maine, just the tip of the iceberg up there. But it's, it's an important step that I think we have to talk about. And so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I'm going to give you the answer according to how I believe, and that I believe the Holy Spirit has given me. And some of you, this will be a review. Some of you may kind of sort of know, but may not really know. And, and some of you may not understand this, may not accept it, may not know it, or even feel comfortable with it. And you may not know the Holy Spirit. You may not know him as who he is in your life. He's just that third, the third person of the Trinity. He's the third entity of the Trinity, so we think. But... The Bible says, that I, and I'm glad that you're here today, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14, these are the things that God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit reaches, searches all things, even the deep things of God. For no one knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. And that is who we're talking about today. What we have received is not spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us, freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. The person without the spirit or the person who doesn't either understand it or doesn't accept it, doesn't want to know about it, because you've heard a lot of things about 
the Holy Spirit. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that comes from the Spirit of God, but considers them maybe foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So at the end of service, we're going to have an opportunity that if, if you learn something new or if you didn't really know the Holy Spirit, and today you're like, I get it. I need this, which is my hope. At the end of the service, we're going to have a time that you can come and you can pray about that. And then, then maybe you'll start to understand. The more you know about the Spirit, the more you understand the spiritual language. The more you know and you understand the Word of God, if you know the Holy Spirit. So the first question, kind of question, questions, is do you know that the Spirit of God is a person, that he is the third part of the Trinity, and he is active in you today? Okay, and like I say, most of you will probably know all this. Um, and trying to explain the Trinity is, is very hard. It's very, um, there's lots of examples out there of what the Trinity kind of looks like, but it, there's nothing that really gives you the fullness of what, that God is one God in three persons. Um, he is God, in, um, God is God, one person, and uh, in three people. He's not a God of one person, three persons, nor is he one God in three gods. But we believe that God is one God in three people, three persons. So at the very kind of simplistic way that I can maybe sort of, this isn't even going to really give you a great definition, but definition. But so I'm Lori, just me, just Lori, one Lori. But I became a wife, then I became a mother, and then I became a pastor. So I'm still Lori, but now I have three different functions. And when my kids are sick, sick, I come to them as mama. I come to them as their comforter, as their provider. When, uh, if, if I'm up here preaching, I'm in the function of pastor. If I came up here as function of wife and told you how great my husband was and how, how much I love him and how wonderful he is, y'all probably wouldn't really, you'd be like, what is she talking about? So I'm still one person, but I have three functions. And so even though that's not exactly the best explanation, that's something that just kind of gives you hopefully a visual picture. Very simplistic, but it's a, it's a picture nonetheless. So there is only one God. Father is our creator. God the Son, Jesus, is our Savior. And the Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter, our advocate. There, depending on which version you read, there's many different descriptions of him of that, but he is our helper. And so I um, saw something, and I, mean, I watched lots of sermons, I've read lots of commentary, and you know, I've just prayed about this, and I saw something in a, in a sermon that kind of gave me a great picture of this, um, that God is three, God is one, but he has a, there's three names to God, three functions, three places, and three statuses. So the first one that we know is God the Father. God the Father is our creator. That is his function. He created everything he needed to create. He provides for us. His place is in heaven on the throne right now. Okay, and his status is he is set apart because he can't be here with us. And I'll explain that in just a minute. But he is a set apart. Then we have God the Son, Jesus. His function is our Savior. That's what he did. That's what he came to earth to do was to give us a Savior. His place is at the right hand of God. He is now seated in heaven at the right hand of God. And the third one is the Holy Spirit. He is our helper. Right now, his status is right here with you on earth living in you. He is active in your life. Now, I'm going to say something um, that don't stone me or, you know, I'm not going to mess with your theology here, but <laughs> Chris, what are you laughing at? So there, I feel like um, God, we have God and we have Jesus and we have the Savior. And God and Jesus, their function is kind of sort of complete. Not that we don't need them, not that we don't pray to them, and not that we don't see them. But their function, God came to create on earth. In Genesis 1-1, God came and he created. He, he gave us everything we need. And we know he's in heaven because 
um, the, the uh, Lord's Prayer, God, um, Father who art in heaven. So we know that he's in heaven. And we don't see anywhere in the Bible that says on the eighth day or on the 4,372th day that God began to create again. So God has created and, and uh, provided everything we need in those first seven days. Or on the seventh day, he rested. So his job is in his function, his creator is done. He's, he's, he's kind of done. So then we step and we have Jesus, our Savior. Now, I wondered why did God wait? Approximately, I looked up the, the time frame between Adam and Jesus and it said approximately 4,000 years. I, don't, I didn't do the math, so I'm just trusting that it's somewhere in there. It doesn't really matter how long it is, but that's kind of generally what they say. Why did God wait so long? When he knew this plan he had to bring his Savior for us, why did he wait so long? And every commentary that I read basically said the same thing, that he was preparing the earth for Jesus to come. He prepared systems he prepared governments he prepared uh, language he prepared uh, roads and ways to get the word out if jesus had come you know the the uh, adam and eve sin kicked out of the garden and now we have jesus how would he have spread the word where would he have known where to go how would he have gotten anywhere so god was preparing in that time frame for jesus to come on the scene to be able to spread the word to be able to get the word the word across the oceans, across lands, forbidden lands. He prepared the way, and then he brought Jesus on the scene. Kind of a tag, you're it, it's your turn. And Jesus came to be our Savior. He spread the word. He said, I am the word. I am the truth. And you can't get back to God because now you're separated from God because we sinned. You can't get back to him except for me. I am your way back to the, to the God. I am here for you. So Jesus does his thing for approximately 33 years, and he, he dies on the cross as our final sacrifice. So his job is complete as well in the function of being that savior. He, he now leaves that to us. He leaves it to his people to put it out there to witness and to tell other people about that. And I know that Jesus, his job is done because it says in John 29, or John 19, 28, and 30, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, hyssop, and put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So Jesus' work on this earth was finished. And he is now sitting at the right hand of God. So now it's time for the Holy Spirit to work his function. And we know that um, they've been together. The Holy Spirit, I don't the Holy Spirit, God, and, the, and Jesus have been together at all times from the beginning. It says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was God creating. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. So there you see God and the Spirit right there in the very beginning. So he's there. Then, to prove that Jesus was there, it says in John 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, has, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So that we know that Jesus also was in the beginning. So you had all three, the three not four, Paul, three of the Trinities, um, th all three of the Godheads in the very beginning. So they've been together the entire time. And to know the Holy Spirit is to know Jesus and to know God. They are the same. They have the same, the same, uh, they're all the same essence of God. They know each other. So if you know one, 
then you know them all. And we couldn't have one without the other because they come in threes. Um, let's see. I lost my place here. So now it's time. Um, God created Jesus. Jesus uh, saved. Now it's time for the Holy Spirit. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Um, Holy Spirit and Spirit empowers us to live, live a life of um, goodness, a life of righteousness. But the interesting thing is we don't always see God the Father, God the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit as the same, as equal, right? We, we kind of put that Holy Spirit out there like, like oh, yeah, we have God, Almighty God, and we have our Savior. But there's this Holy Spirit that's kind of weird. We've seen some weird things that he's done. He makes people do weird things. But the Holy Spirit isn't weird or forceful, but he is faithful. And I, I love talking about the Holy Spirit because there's so, I mean, there's just so much. Like, I'm trying to stick to my notes because, oh, there's just so much about the Holy Spirit, and I get so excited to talk about it. Um, but he has, like I said earlier, he has many descriptions as the, he, uh, the helper, the comforter, the counselor. He's our teacher. He's our um, intercessor. Um, and he's our peace. And so um, in John 14, 15, 26, this is Jesus promising the Holy Spirit to us. And there's just some things I'm going to point out in here to, to keep in mind um, that, remember, there's one God, three Godheads, Father, Son, Spirit, okay? If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, someone similar to Jesus. Another here is someone similar to him to help you with and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but, and this you have to understand this, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you, and he's in you because you have Jesus in you. If you're a saved Christian, you have Jesus, and you, you accepted Jesus because you found out about God. So if you know him, you know Jesus, you know God. So you do know who the Holy Spirit is. You know his heart, his mind. You know all of those things. <clears throat> um, yeah, so when you get Jesus or the Holy Spirit, you get Jesus and God. They're kind of a package deal here. So I um, will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And I don't believe that's the part where he says, I will come to you. I don't think that's when he comes back. Because he says, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me, but you will see me. Because he's coming back in the spirit of God's spirit. So he is still going to be with you. Because I live, you also live. On that day, you will realize that I am the Father, I'm in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, says, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? And this is, this again, it just is just another proof that when you get the Holy Spirit, you get Jesus and you get God. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we, God and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will come to them and make our home with them. And, and so that tells me that Jesus and God also are a part of who is in you when you have the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise, how would they come to you and make their home in you? Because you, sure, when you die, you go to heaven and you will be with G uh, God and Jesus there as well. But he says, we're going to come to you where you're at on this earth right now. We're going to be with you. We're going to make our home with you. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, but they belong to the Father who sent me. So he is speaking the Father's will. He's speaking the Father's voice. He's speaking the Father's heart, along with the Holy Spirit. All of this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all these things and remind you of everything I said. And he will remind you because he was there when Jesus said it to you. That's how the Holy Spirit can remind you. He also teaches you from now on, but he reminds you because he was there when Jesus was there. There was um, a movie once that I watched. I've watched it a couple of times, actually. It was called The Shack. And um, 
I know there's controversy about it, and I'm not suggesting you watch it or approve it, any of that. But what I did really like about the shack was the way that they portrayed the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the guy's coming, and he's talking to one, and he walks out the door and picks the same conversation up. It just kind of helped me, a visual of they're all one and three. They all know what they all say. They all know what they all mean, and they all have the same heart. So that one was a really um, kind of uh, new for me that I, you know, that kind of just gave me a picture of they are still three and one. When you get one, you get them all three. The second question is, do you see the Holy Spirit as a person? Okay. Um, the, the Bible does describe him as, as a person. And if, he, if, if he's not a person, you won't build relationship with him. If it's a chair, you don't build relationship with a chair or an it or a thing. You build relationships with people. Some people uh, see him as an enigma. Some see him as an impersonal force or influence. Some deny that he actually exists. And others are not certain about the Holy Spirit. But the Bible does talk about being a person. And when you look up person, it says that we, by person, we mean one who has their own identity and individuality as a natural being, or rational being. They are conscious of their existence. They have a mind, a will, and emotions. So I'm going to show you in the next, uh, these next verses that we read that the Holy Spirit has a mind. Because I want you to know, I want you to believe the Holy Spirit is a person. Not a thing in it, um, not a weird, weird guy out there or a weird thing out there. So in John 16, 13, we're going to look at the mind of the Holy Spirit. And it says, but when he, the true... Uh, but when he, the true spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So he still has the ability to tell you what's coming. He's going to teach you in the things of coming. He has to be able to have a mind. Even though he's, he's got the mind of Christ, he still has a, a mind to teach you and to show you these things. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for sometimes, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Sometimes you are in a situation where you don't know how to pray. You are desperate or you are hurting and you don't know what to say. But the Holy Spirit knows you. He knows your heart. He knows your life. He knows your situation. He prays to the Father for you. He is an interceder. and He has to have a mind to be able to know those things. Also, it says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you, which we, we did cover that already. But again, it's about teaching. He's got to have a mind to be able to teach you and to recall the things that you've already been taught through the Jesus. Now we're going to talk about the will of God, the will of the Holy Spirit, sorry. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit is still God, he knows the will of the people, and he intercedes for you. He helps you on the right path, and he has uh, your best interest at heart. And because he's all, and, and the cool thing is he's, just, he's always with the Father and the Son, so you get the whole package at all times. They know you, and he's been there from the beginning, so they know you. Paul and his companions... Uh, in Acts 16.6, 6, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Nigeria and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from pe preaching the word of the providence. By the will of the Spirit, he kept them from preaching. There was trouble. He, he guided them through that and when to preach, where to preach. That was his will, being he, him using his will to, to uh, show them where to go and where not to go. And emotion. He's a person, so he has emotions, right? So Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There's a lot of explanations I've heard of what grieves the Holy Spirit, so I just looked up a few verses, and it gives you a very clear definition of what grieves the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.21-31 says, When you have heard about Christ and were taught in him accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, 
you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must no longer steal, but must work, doing something useful with their hands, that they may have something to share with others in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for the building up of others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. So get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. So you see, somewhere in there, I fit in several of those. And I'm sure that uh, there, there's more than just me that can say I've been in that place before. So you can grieve the Holy Spirit. He is an emotional person. He, I mean, I, and I really want you just to really feel his presence. I want you to feel that, man, he, he's like a, a person right with you. He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit is a person just as God the Father is and just as God the Son. And if you don't see him as a person, again, you won't have relationship. You won't build relationship. And if you haven't done that in the past, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if you're not praying and you're not listening for the Holy Spirit, because that's who's going to speak to you through the Father's will, through Jesus' will, and through their heart, the Spirit will speak to you. So if you don't have that, I encourage you by the end of this, of this, you know, that you would pray about that and that you would receive because he truly is your friend. And the best thing is, um, you know, he, if you don't want to surrender to him, your innermost thoughts, your secrets and all that, he already knows them. And he loves you anyway. He's right there always willing to hand out his hand for help. He never says, oh, I've had enough. You've done it one too many times. No. He is there every single time knowing where you're at, knowing what you've done. The next question is, what are the blessings that come from the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit has been fashioned, formed, and suited to help you. He knows you from the beginning. He knows you when God knit you in your mother's womb. He knew you at that point. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. And he knows the plan that God has for you because he has the mind of Christ. And he knows your fears, and he knows his heart, your heart, and he loves you and wants relationship with you. And, I mean, to me, that is just encouraging that you don't just get just the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, it's just an essence of God and an essence of Jesus. They all are the same in one. So you don't just separate him, and that's who you have. You get them all three. Um, we're going to talk about, like, the, bl the, the blessings are, um, and there are so many, but I picked out a few here. Um, one of the blessings is the Holy Spirit empowers you to witness to Jesus. That is the first thing that he empowered them to do is to be his witnesses. If you have been saved, you have a testimony. People say, I don't always have a testimony. I didn't come from some addiction or I didn't have this big transformation. The minute that you said, Jesus, I love you and I want you in my heart, that's your testimony. Whatever you were doing at that moment, that's your testimony, wherever in your life you were. The Holy Spirit will empower you to tell people. He will empower you to give you boldness to step out when you're afraid to talk to people. Maybe you're kind of a shy person or you don't know how they're going to accept you. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do that. If you have a sick loved one like Tamara has in her, her family, God will give you power to healing for healing. He will give you the power to play, lay your hands on someone and heal people. But we don't always believe that, so we don't do that. But God, or the Holy Spirit, will give you the power to do that. The next thing is the Holy Spirit makes us able to worship God. As believers, we have a unique privilege to just be in the presence of God, to be in worship with God. I mean, like, Pour your heart out and let, let him feel your presence, and you feel his presence. 
But people sometimes get bored or not interested. They, they just come because, you know, they come in late because they don't really care about worship. Or they come at the end or they, they play on their phones or you, whatever the case is. That's not true worshiping God. True worship is a supernatural thing that you do with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important, and I love our team so much because I feel the presence of God when they are singing, when they are bringing us into worship. And it's not about them. They're amazing and all that. They're amazing, but it's the presence of the Holy Spirit that we feel when we get here, when we just take everything off that's bothering us the whole week, and we say, okay, I am yours. And then this team comes up, and they just sing, and you feel the presence just feeling this room. Like I said, there are times. I don't know if any of it's happened to you, but there are times literally when the air has changed. Like I said earlier, I can feel that the presence of God is here. And in John 4, 23, it says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So if you're not coming to worship, because you just don't like music or you just come in late or you come in at the end or, you, or you're fiddling on your phone, that's not what God is looking for. You know, it's important. Our, our worship team works very hard, and they are here every Sunday morning an hour before anybody else. And they practice, and they, they bring in the worship every Sunday. You know, and, and they're doing their part. We need to do our part. We need to do our part to worship God as they are allowing us to, as they are preparing this place for that. The third thing is the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural gifts. And this is where the weirdness of most people kind of come in. And that in itself is, that's like Texas, California, and maybe, I don't know, what's another big one, Colorado, all put together. So we're not talking about that today. Don't, yeah, not California. Not California for sure. <laughs> All right, so let me, um, each believer oh, no, has been given a supernatural gift by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 12, it says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, the common good of our church, of our body. To one there is given, to, uh, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit is given this out. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing. So we do have the gift of healing if we exercise it. And where's my dog? Uh, to another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in a different kinds of tongue, which we heard today, by the way, Kathy, thank you. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these things work of the same spirit, and he distributes them, each one as he determines. And the gifts, they, are, can, be, they can be scary. They can be unknown. And if you don't know your gifts, you know, we need to do a, a spiritual gift sometime and just see where, where God is leading you. And, and then don't be afraid to step out in that. I mean, I think you can have multiple gifts or different, different times of a gift. Um, I remember one Sunday, I was sitting over here, and they were, the worship team was singing, um, and I think it was something about a battle, and, like, my whole body, like, just almost was burning, like, just felt like, oh, my gosh, what's going on here? And then I look up here, and I, and it's, I mean, this is going to be weird. This is where that weird stuff comes in, but I'm just telling you, it's the Holy Spirit, but I, I literally could see God standing there, like so, and I got up and, and gave a word about that these battles that we fight are not our battles. You know, we're to stand behind God, and he fights for us. And at the same time I'm coming up, I see Chris jump up over here because she had a word as well. And she gave a verse about not being our battles to fight, which to me confirmed what I said was from God. So, it, I mean, it's a word of knowledge. So, you know, that was for the church to say there was somebody out there. And I think if God prompts you to that, there's somebody in this room sitting here that needed to hear that, that was going through a battle, and they're tired, and they're, they're just they're overwhelmed, and they needed to know that 
take that battle. It's not your battle. You give it to God, and you let him fight for you. So those gifts that God gives us, that the Holy Spirit pours out into us, are very important gifts. So please don't be afraid of them. Um, I mean, I, I hope as we grow, as we learn more about the Holy Spirit, that we will start to see more of that around here. We will see more speaking in tongues. We will see more edification of this body. I mean, we have an amazing church now. Imagine if everybody in here started using the gifts. If they really sat down and said, Holy Spirit, what gift have you given me? I'm going to use that. You tell me when to use the Holy Spirit. You prompt me. If we did that, can you imagine the lives that we could change and the difference we could make? They are to edify our body here, edify the church. And, and these, these giftings are not just, um, you know, an afterthought. No, no, no. These giftings is the way that God can speak through his people. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is, is hearing the word from God, hearing the will of God, the heart of God, the mind of God. So God speaks through the, the interpretations. He speaks through the words of knowledge. He speaks through healing. So we don't want to muffle that. You know, and I, I know it's, like I said, we have all kinds of denominations in here, some that don't, you know, don't know about the Holy Spirit or have never seen some things. And some of us have seen and heard some crazy things, you know, that, that when they're that crazy and, and wild and, and not edifying to the body, then they're not of God. If God's going to bring a manifestation to this church, it's going to edify him. It's going to edify the body to him and glorify him. And, of course, we cannot forget um, the, the fourth thing, blessing, that we get um, from the Holy Spirit is Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And this is how you know if the Spirit is working, if you are allowing him in your life or not. If you are uh, experiencing love and joy and peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that only comes from the Holy Spirit. That ain't from you. You on your own, me on my own, cannot do those things. But the Holy Spirit will bring that out in you. He brings that. And, and why wouldn't we want those things? We could be miserable. We could be unkind to people. We could be fearful. We could be faithless. We could be harsh. But that's not what God's looking for either. He gave us the Holy Spirit to transform us. I love the transforming speak, or a pre, a message that Dusty gave last week, that we have the ability through the Holy Spirit to make that new channel right it's not um it's not natural for us to do that we have to we have to purposefully make that channel i'm good i am kind the holy spirit makes me um uh, gentle the holy spirit changes me not me not me one day i was at walmart and i've told this story before but i was at walmart and i got some um, a few things and i bought a printer cartridge that was like 75 dollars. i mean printer cartridges are expensive so i give her my total on my card and i as I'm walking out to the car, I look at what my total was, and it was only like, I don't know, 30 bucks. And I'm like, whoa, was there a sale, you know? And so I'm looking at my receipt. She didn't ring up the cartridge. Of course, Lori thought, sweet. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just got a new printer cartridge, and it cost me nothing. And then the Holy Spirit went, <clears throat> and I walked right back in there to the same cash register, and I said, ma'am, you didn't charge me for this. <laughs> and she's like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe you brought that back. And I said, oh, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit in me. And she just kind of laughed. I'm like, no, really, it wasn't me. I would have gone for the free printer cartridge. But our blessings, I mean, there are pages of Scripture that our blessings and our empowerments and encouragements all from the Holy Spirit. Um, there, there's so many more. I, can, I just can't even go over them because I don't have time for that. Um, Paul, if you and the team will come up. Um, they're going to sing this song, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. And I just want you to take some time. Prayer partners, will you come on up too? Um, just so that we have, um, if you want to pray about it, you can talk to one of our prayer partners if you want, or you can come to the altar. You can come up for any kind of prayer that you might need, not just for the Holy Spirit. But what I want you to leave with today is the Holy Spirit is a person equally as important as the Father and the Son. You've got to get that. It's equally as important. You can't live a Christian-filled good life without the Holy Spirit. 
He is who who transforms you. He is who peels away you and gives you the characteristics of God. He is active in your life today. If you are living and breathing, he is active in you, and he's just waiting for you. There are so many blessings that you can receive if you just accept him, know him, and unleash him into your life. You cannot look like Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You just can't. We are not capable as human beings. Our best as humans to God is filthy rags. It's the Holy Spirit who makes us white as snow, who cleans us. Well, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, but he cleans us. He makes us whole again. He makes us into better people. He makes us Christ-like. You cannot truly see sin in your life without the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts you, who says, not, 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 <clears throat> Lori, you're not going to take this. That's stealing. I was willing to do it. But the Spirit stopped me in my tracks because I've learned to listen to that. And you won't change. You just won't change without the Holy Spirit. It's just that simple. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome come them because the one who is in you is greater than the one in the world. Greater is he, the Holy Spirit in me, than he, the, the enemy. And the enemy can come in many different things. It can be addictions. It can be depression. It can be bad relationships. It can be at a bad job. That can be the enemy at all areas of your life. But greater is the Holy Spirit. He has overcome the enemy. So when you need to know how to overcome the enemy, who do you go to? You go to the Holy Spirit. When you pray out, you know, God, I need your help. Give me, give me, um, give me a word or give me something. God's like, all right, Holy Spirit, you got this. You know me, my will and my heart, go tell him. Because he's the one active and alive in you today. We are all overcomers because of the Holy Spirit. After all, he has the backing and the knowledge of the Father and the Son. Do you know it and depend on him? Do you accept him and know that he is your guide? He is your everything. If not, start today. You stay in your seat, come up here, pray, however. But start today with Holy Spirit. I need you to be active in my life starting now. So we're going to um, hear this worship song, give you some time to pray, and then we'll close in prayer. Oh 
us and to be active in us, to change us. Holy Spirit, show us the things that we need to change. Show us how to be more Christ-like. Show us how to defeat the enemy because your word says that you have already overcome the enemy. So we need you, Holy Spirit, to give us that confidence by being in us, being active in us, and talking to us, speaking to us. Holy Spirit, we love you. We want to get to know you more. We want you to explode in this church, that we would see the word of God come out in, in, in the spirit of the gifts that you've given us, that we would just truly transform our minds into the mind like the Holy Spirit, who is also our Savior, who is also our Father. We thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. All right, nobody go anywhere because we are having a potluck, and I don't want to hear, I didn't bring anything. We have so much food, we're going to feed an army downstairs. So please stay. We have hamburgers, hot dogs, all the fixings. So if you don't have lunch plans, now you do. You are welcome to stay, and we want you to stay because I don't know some of you, and I want to get to know you. All right, so go downstairs. Let's get some food. <laughs>